Oi right, guys, welcome back to F1 News. Mercedes are fast-tracking their major upgrade initially planned for Imola to the Miami Grand Prix because they simply cannot afford to lose any more ground to their rivals in the Constructors' Championship. Will the upgrade package do anything, though? That certainly is a concern of the drivers. And will it do anything to convince Max Verstappen that Mercedes could be the backup team to Red Bull if things internally continue to be rather chaotic? And the Christian Horner versus Total Wolf drama, as a result, does certainly continue today. Very much interested in your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new, as always. I would greatly appreciate it. First of all, this is a potential Ferrari livery that they may consider for the Miami Grand Prix because rumor has it as of today that Ferrari's SF24 will run a blue shaded livery for the Miami Grand Prix. This is a nod to their heritage racing in the US and presumably it's actually probably just going to be blue and white or maybe blue and silver or something like that. So it's going to be quite the departure. But um, yeah, this is a nod to how they, you know, some liveries that the Ferraris we used to have way back in the day and certainly they used to use on American soil. Racing as the North American racing team back in 1964, Ferrari had a blue and white delivery for the final couple of races. So, well, maybe they'll go for shades of blue and of course the red, which is typical Ferrari, but I guess we'll see what they come up with here. But I thought it was interesting just to look at some of these throwback liveries and what they might be cooking up, especially in light today of a partnership that has been rumored between Ferrari and Hewlett Packard. So you guys can actually see here this kind of classic BMW livery with the HP color scheme and the logos and apparently HP is going to announce a sponsorship with Scuderia Ferrari for the upcoming season. Now this is actually a pretty big deal for Ferrari and also for well Mercedes potentially for Lewis Hamilton because HP or at least HPE so Hewlett Packard Enterprises which I'm pretty sure is what that means they work with Mercedes right now but HP are due to announce of course major player in the tech and you know computer PC space also printers you know I'm sure many of you guys might have an HP printer and yeah so they are set to announce potentially a title sponsorship arrangement which deal value is comparable to the Oracle Red Bull Racing deal which is the most value in an F1 and what they say is that it's probably going to help Ferrari afford the Hamilton salary <laughs> of course they're going to pay him but also Hamilton joining potentially is why these things are happening right we've talked about this recently that Mercedes they're dropping back down the grid lots of their partners are thinking well we ain't going to pay you the same money we used to we are either going to take a step back in terms of what level of sponsorship we provide or we're going to follow Lewis to Ferrari, which will be, I think, a rather consistent trend with some of these sponsors. So, um, yeah, we'll see if that happens with HPE, because yeah, I think they do partner with Mercedes, whether that no longer is the case, and it's just HP with Ferrari, and it's going to be a title sponsor deal. Now, whenever Ferrari do this, there's no way, because Red Bull Racing is Oracle Red Bull Racing, the Oracle comes first, whereas for Ferrari, there's no way they are letting any other brands have precedence over theirs. So if there is going to be a title sponsor arrangement, I'm sure it will be Scuderia Ferrari HP, Formula One team or whatever. Like probably just Scuderia Ferrari HP is what it'll be, which probably isn't so bad. It ain't great, sure, Scuderia Ferrari is better, but that's what they're going to do it seems because they can get a lot of money in for doing exactly that. And maybe that's a contributing factor to some degree for why, you know, let's say that is announced this weekend or next weekend's, that might make sense with whatever livery color scheme they're going to go for Miami and they could run this for the other US races as well would be kind of interesting but of course they've got to make their car faster as well they have a major upgrade package planned for Imola and Ferrari have said well you know look we want to make progress with our car but right now we are on a decent trajectory they said this before China to be fair and China was not a good weekend for them so there is definitely something to learn for Ferrari about why they were so far off the pace they weren't that bad in open air conditions on the medium tyre. But on the hard tyre, they were struggling with getting the tyres in the right window. And even Russell was like competitive with Sainz in the final stints before then Sainz kind of got the tyres in the window and then pulled away. So that was the race pace data from China on that final stint on the hard tyres. Only Norris was within half a second of Verstappen. Perez was further back. Leclerc was almost a second back. And then, yeah, the Mercedes, the less said about them, the better. And that's what the Mercedes guys are saying today that well they've improved compared to last year obviously everyone's improved I mean come on like if you haven't improved your car from last year to this year what are you doing apart from Alpine maybe got a step backwards but even they've made some progress in terms of their setup over the last few races they're no longer like unanimously the worst all of the time at every track they go to which isn't where any factory team should be 
But, you know, fair enough, Alpine may have made some steps over the last couple of rounds, but Mercedes is saying, yeah, our car's better than last year, but, like, everybody else has made further strides than we have, including Red Bull, of course, which is why they are in a massive predicament. But Ferrari was saying, well, we're going to not fast-track any upgrades because we're confident our car's a good base, and then in Imola they can make the changes. But, obviously, China wasn't good. So lots to learn, I think, for Ferrari based on this weekend's, whether they can take any of that learning into Miami, and also, depending on what they learn, that is going to influence the upgrade direction. Whatever Red Bull do to their car works as they intend it to. The simulator works perfectly with what's happening in reality. You know, whether the simulator is literally just in Adrian Newey's head, I don't know. But whatever they bring, they say, yep, it did exactly what we intended it to. And therefore, Red Bull have an upgrade plan for the entire season. And they can be 99% confident whatever they're planning is going to work. Whereas Mercedes and, you know, for the other teams, Ferrari potentially included... They might have to adjust their plan because, well, they've got X, Y, Z things planned for the next three months, but all of a sudden you discover something about your car and now that upgrade plan doesn't make sense because now there's another issue you've got to resolve that is underlying to what was causing the other issues you were trying to resolve. This is the problem Mercedes have. Historically, let's say pre-2022, Mercedes upgrades usually worked absolutely as intended and it was Ferrari who struggled with that. Last season, Ferrari brought a big upgrade to Japan and it worked and Mercedes they, well, their changes haven't seemed to have made the difference they've expected to over the last couple of years. And obviously that also occurs to changes during the winter period when they're designing the new car. So McLaren, they have upgrades planned as well. They have three significant season packages in the works. The typical dates for this is like Imola, Silverstone and then you know maybe Austin depends on when the races are this year compared to last year to be fair but um you know you'll see for McLaren and probably for other teams as well three in-season upgrade packages that arrive the first one is due for McLaren just around the corner in Miami it's interesting right because it's another sprint weekend in Miami we go back-to-back -back sprints so um, you know I still don't massively like sprints but whatever at least it gave us that fantastic sprint shootout qualifying on the Friday. McLaren are also saying their management tire management in the high temperatures is a bit of a problem for them so they think their Miami upgrade is going to be a significant step but it's an interesting rounds to bring upgrade to just because you typically think Imola geographically is more centralized to where the teams are based so often you will see upgrades to the the European rounds more generally and also you've got one hour of practice the same reason why most teams would not bring in anything to China a couple of teams brought a couple of new things to China but when you've got one hour of practice which isn't that representative because a lot of the time you're saving tire compounds for the rest of the weekends you don't really get to show or do that much then you've got a sprint shootout a sprint a quali and a race there isn't much time to dial in these upgrades. So usually you'll see the teams delay them until they have three practice sessions on a weekend. And, well, that you typically would be the plan. But Lando Norris still seems somewhat confident they can do something because I think at the start of the year, before the year began, Norris was confident he would win a race this season, finally. He's had his first chance if Max was to have DNF'd, but obviously that didn't happen. But McLaren were far better this weekend than they expected to be, certainly in comparison to Ferrari. And given that Ferrari have got a win this year in Australia, Norris's feeling is that, yeah, he's confident that we can fight Red Bull. We will be able to get a win this year. But even Andrea Stella said that they're going to need 12 months McLaren to catch Red Bull. And that's if they continue their current rate of progression, which is, you know, and obviously Red Bull are also going to keep making progress, right? So that is the scary thing for the competition. Mercedes, well, I'm not saying they should give up, but um, they ain't obviously anywhere close at the moment. And there is, you know, there's no way that Mercedes produce a championship challenger next season based on this information. This year needed to be a mega step forward. And Mercedes was saying, well, you know, as long as we start out the season being reasonably competitive with a good base, then we could be able to compete with Ripple in the second half of the year. That seems to be what they'd achieved in Bahrain. The car worked in Bahrain. Sure, it wasn't where they wanted it to be, but they were able to put in some good laps in testing and qualifying the car seems pretty stable pretty consistent a better rear end on the car but they just didn't have the downforce they weren't generating the performance however in the race in Bahrain they had their problems and then Jeddah was a nightmare they had no rear downforce in the high speed corners they were like basically the worst car on the grid apart from the Haas in the higher speed sections They've somewhat fixed that over the last couple of races, but as a trade-off, their low-speed performance is now atrocious. So the Mercedes can't seem to get anything right, and therefore they're going to bring a big upgrade package coming through. The concern that I think many have about this is that, sure, if your car is fine and you understand it, and your simulator works and it correlates with what you see on track, then sure, your upgrade package should deliver the expected outcome. 
but for Mercedes, do they know? Are they actually especially confident that what they're going to bring to the car is actually going to work? Because, well, all the discussion from Mercedes has been, and maybe Toto Wolff is kind of sweeping it under the rug a little bit, because as Christian Oliver is about to suggest, maybe the reason why Toto keeps going on about Max is to try and, you know, take some attention away from the fact that his team is in a massive slide. But um, yeah, Toto Wolff actually criticised Hamilton for changing the setup so drastically, saying that, yeah, we don't have to try and find a silver bullet every weekend when it comes to adjusting the cars. Lewis took a completely wrong turn. The car didn't want to go around the corners. And Hamilton said, yeah, paid the price for that one. And obviously Toto's not happy that they, you know, if Hamilton had kept the setup from the sprint, they would have scored more points. They wouldn't have scored drastically more points, and I don't really blame Hamilton for trying something else. And even George Russell said, yeah, we've got to do these experiments. It is what it is. But um, yeah, so Toto, interesting comments, I thought, there, to be fair. The car only works in a small window, said Hamilton. I thought it was the right thing to do. Russell actually yeah, defended it and says, yeah, we've got to take some different paths to understand more about the car. They've been saying this now for like three years. Some engineers see it that way, too. They insist the W15 is a better car than a W14, which, sure, it's faster based on the data, but it ain't much faster. And I don't know, the Mercedes engineers still seem convinced that there is a car under there somewhere. They just haven't quite found out the way to extract it yet, which is, well, we've heard this for years now, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me, fool me 17 times, like, yeah, definitely shame on the community at that point. So, yeah, they believe that it's improved compared to last year, but relative to the competition, they have not improved enough. So Toto Wolf says, behind Red Bull, everything is so close together that small improvements make a big difference, and therefore they are going to fast track their upgrades. An upgrade in Miami should now fix that. It was planned for Imola, but has been brought forward. Mercedes doesn't want to drive in no man's land any longer. So will the upgrade do anything? That's the question. These are the things they're looking to change. A new floor, so the upper elements of the floor, like on the leading edge and stuff, those are probably gonna change, in addition to actually the floor itself. And this has been a big debate over the last few years in Formula One. What is the key to Red Bull's performance advantage? Initially, let's say the first couple of months of um, 2022, the discussion was, oh, it's on the floor, you know, because it was Grand Effect era for the first time. Red Bull seemingly had understood something on the floor. And Ferrari, of course, were quick at the start of that year as well. But Red Bull had an overweight car once they dialed that out. They were more competitive, even disregarding TD39. But, you know, talk about the floor. Then over time, people discuss, well, you know what? It's probably more so the suspension, the base platform for the car, the anti-dive, the anti-squat on the front and the rear parts of the car, enabling this incredibly stable mechanical platform that allows the floor to go to work and has its pros and its cons, but of course, mainly its pros. And that was the part of the car, the suspension that Adrian Newey designed himself going into 2022, knowing that was massively important. But over the last, I don't know, six months or so, the discussion has now come back around to, yeah, the floor is probably pretty damn important. And of course, everything works together. But the feeling is that if there's one thing that Mercedes are missing and don't fully understand and aren't on top of, it quite possibly is the floor. Because when there's correlation issues that they didn't have pre-2022 with their car, that they now still have, and in Jeddah, they admitted that, yeah, it still ain't great for us. We don't really understand what is going on. You know, the floor now creates downfalls that it didn't pre-2022. The ground effect wasn't a thing. So it's got to be there somewhere. I imagine the calculations when the car is incredibly close to the ground are incredibly challenging to accomplish. You've got to, well, the car is stuck to the ground, but as it gets closer to the ground, you don't want the downfalls to increase from the floor because then you're going to smash into the floor and the porpoising effect begins. You want to, at some point, stall the downfalls generated. And when you're talking millimeters and when you're talking bumpy tracks, it's obviously a challenge to understand the physics of what is going on. And Mercedes, of course, maintain a physics problem. So they're going to bring a new floor. If they get the floor right, maybe that is the key to their success. And maybe they're going to finally unlock the performance that apparently is inherent in that car. But, um, you know, at this point, I don't, it's boy who cried wolf, right? Like, I don't think anyone really believes Mercedes at this point are actually going to make sizable steps. And maybe that's why Lewis Hamilton is sitting there just, you know, he's smiling through the pain at times, realizing probably that, yeah, the car ain't going to get that much better, but they're going to keep on trying. So this is Toto Wolff as well versus Christian Horner because the drama between these two continues and Toto was asked the question, do you think there's a chance you can get Max? And Toto says, if I was Max, I would stay at Red Bull, but I'm not Max. I'm really bad at signing actually because it's the quickest car, but there are other factors. So kind of implying that, yeah, like, look, Max, I, if I was Max, I would stay at Red Bull, but I'm bad at making decisions, so therefore Max should leave. So it's like, this guy can't help himself, can he? And then Christian Horner goes on to say, does Toto just talk about 
about Max to avoid talking about his car and his team's performance. And there might well be some truth to this, to be fair. And quite simply, Christian Horner's basically sitting there telling Toto, like, you know, fix your effing car. You know, we've heard that before and we're probably going to hear it again. Now, one thing that Toto might say back to Horner is fix your effing engine, because in 2026, this is a big question. We've got the brand new power units, of course, coming in a couple of years' time. The power unit regulations are locked in. The chassis side is not. And, uh, well, that is the point of concern for the 2026 regs, because we're not far away now. I mean, what is it? End of April, nearly? We are at the start of January next year. The team's going to start designing the cars. And it ain't far away to get these regulations absolutely locked in and the problems resolved. The engines, though, we know what they're going to be. We've known for some time. And therefore, you know, Ferrari, Audi, Honda, Mercedes, etc., etc. You know, Renault, if you even want to mention them. They've been designing their engines now for quite some time. And this is what we have on the Red Bull powertrain side. So Red Bull are now doing their own thing with Ford, whereas, you know, of course, right now it's still Red Bull powertrains, but it's basically Honda until 2026. And actually, Horner's words on their engine project, if I'm Max Verstappen, wouldn't fill me with that much confidence, I'm not going to lie, because he was asked the question, like, is your engine project in a crisis? And he doesn't say no. He says, we are trying to face the natural growth curve. On engines, we are 70 years behind Ferrari, which is... You know, quite something for Horner to say, isn't it? Because I don't think you usually see Horner say something like this. Usually he's very much, oh no, we're, we're fully on track. Everything's under control, guys, don't worry. And sure, like maybe he's trying to say, well, we're the underdogs like Ferrari and others have built engines for decades in Formula One. We're just starting. Of course, you know, it doesn't really work like this. The engines nowadays are far different to where they were back then. But in some regards, Red Bull don't have engine designing heritage like Ferrari do. So we have a very competent group of people at work and we're trying to apply the same philosophy to the engine that we apply to the chassis. The engine, however, is a different challenge. Where are we compared to the others? No one has any guarantees of where they are compared to the competition. We are talking about a blank sheet of paper. The fact of not having an engine of this generation has both advantages and disadvantages because obviously we don't have a starting point nor reliability parameters to translate. Only in 2026 will we actually see if we have achieved our objectives. But if I look at the two years that have passed so far, taken into account a practically standing start, we've already achieved notable results. So, I don't know, as far as I'm concerned, for Christian Horner, this isn't exactly a massively positive review of their situation, is it? And yeah, they're talking about a 70-year disadvantage. So, I don't know, if I'm Max Verstappen, if I'm Toto Wolf, I'm sitting there thinking... Well, maybe there's something to be said about the Mercedes engine project in 26 and beyond might be in a better position. The issue is, of course, can Mercedes build a car? And that's one of the other reasons why I feel like they're bringing the upgrade ASAP to Miami is so that Toto can hopefully, at least for his sake, have a car that looks a bit better so he can say to Max, look, we do know what we're doing still. We can be on the podium again. And if Mercedes can get there then maybe there's a case for Max to think about it. But until that point, I mean, just have a look at this. This is Mercedes points total after five races over the last decade and a little bit. And this is the lowest they've ever been since 2012, which, um, I mean, look at the last 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 has basically been getting worse and worse with respect to their competition every single year. So if you're much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below, hit the like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, take care, and I'll see you next time.